The creation of the 1967 TV series The Prisoner required a meticulous casting process to find the right actors who could bring the unique storyline to life. One of the most notable aspects of the casting was choosing Patrick M. C. Guin for the lead role. M. Guin was already famous for his work on the spy series Danger Man, which made him an ideal candidate to play number six, the main character in The Prisoner. His experience in espionage shows added depth to his portrayal of the complex and mysterious protagonist. Finding the perfect actress to play number two proved to be more challenging. The creators went through several candidates before settling on Leo McKern. Initially, McKern turned down the part due to scheduling conflicts, but later changed his mind after being impressed by the script. His memorable performance became one of the defining elements of the show. Another essential aspect of the casting process involved finding suitable actors for various roles in the village, where much of the action takes place. George Baker, who played the role of number two in earlier episodes, recalled that during the auditions, the producers were looking for individuals who possessed intriguing qualities rather than traditional acting skills. They believed these unusual traits would help create the eerie atmosphere needed for the surreal setting of the show. To further enhance the cast dynamic, potential actors underwent chemistry tests to gauge their compatibility with other performers. This collaborative approach resulted in a strong ensemble that helped elevate the material and contribute to the lasting appeal of the cult classic. Overall, careful consideration and attention to detail marked the casting process behind The Prisoner, allowing it to stand out among its contemporaries and continue resonating with audiences today. The Prisoner, a 1967 television series, was brought to life by director Patrick McSeguin. Known for his unique directorial vision, MC Guin drew inspiration from various sources, including his background in acting and his interest in exploring themes of individuality and control. MC Guin's approach to the series was characterized by a distinctive style, blending elements of psychological thriller, science fiction, and allegory. This creative fusion kept viewers on the edge of their seats as they were left guessing about the true nature of the mysterious village and its enigmatic number six. Collaboration played a key role in the success of The Prisoner. MC Guin worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering an environment that encouraged creativity and innovation. This collaborative spirit was evident in the show's unconventional narrative structure, which often featured non-linear storytelling and symbolic imagery. One notable example of MC Guin's creative influence can be seen in the episode Once Upon a Time, where the director himself stepped into the role of number six. This bold choice allowed MC Guin to fully explore the character's psyche, providing a deeper understanding of the series' themes and motifs. In addition to his work behind the camera, MC Guin's acting background significantly impacted the show's development. His experience in the industry allowed him to effectively communicate his vision to the cast, ensuring that their performances aligned with his creative goals. The prisoner's enduring appeal can be attributed to MC Guin's directorial vision, which continues to captivate audiences today. By pushing the boundaries of conventional storytelling, MC Guin created a timeless piece of television that remains as intriguing and thought-provoking as ever. The Prisoner is a classic TV series that first aired in 1967, featuring Patrick MC Guin as number six, a former secret agent held captive in a mysterious village. Here are some fascinating facts about this iconic show. First, did you know that MC Guin was also a writer and director for the series? He contributed to several episodes and even directed two of them. Moreover, he turned down the role of James Bond twice before creating The Prisoner. Second, the famous opening sequence, where number six resigns from his job, was shot in various London locations during rush hour, causing quite a stir among passersby. And the line, I am not a number, I am a free man was improvised by N.C. Guin on set. Third, each episode has its unique title, but it wasn't until after production ended that someone realized all the titles could be arranged into a meaningful acrostic message. Can you figure out what it says? Now, let us dive deeper into some emotional moments. While known for its humor and suspenseful storyline, The Prisoner had its share of heartbreaking scenes too. One example occurs when number six learns about his deceased colleague who died while investigating the village. This revelation adds another layer to the mysteries surrounding their captivity. Did you have a memorable moment or personal connection to The Prisoner? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Stay tuned for more fun facts about this classic TV series. The Prisoner, a 1967 TV series, was known for its unique set design and memorable locations. 
Filmed primarily at Port Marion, a picturesque village in Wales, the production faced several logistical challenges. One example is the transportation of cast and crew members over hilly terrain along with heavy equipment needed for filming. To overcome these issues, special arrangements were made to construct roads and pathways leading up to specific shooting spots within Port Marion. Additionally, portable generators were utilized since there wasn't enough electricity supply available on location. Set design innovation, the creators aimed to establish an atmosphere of surveillance and control which led to the creation of the iconic village. Designed by architect Clough Williams Ellis, it featured futuristic architecture mixed with Victorian styles. This unusual combination added a sense of surreality and mystery that perfectly complemented the theme of the series. Another notable aspect of the set design includes the distinctive spherical white balloons used to monitor and control the prisoners. These floating orbs became one of the most recognizable elements of this classic. Technically, they were quite advanced for their time. Operated by remote control and equipped with cameras and speakers, filming challenges and solutions being filmed mostly on location posed various difficulties. For instance, unpredictable weather conditions often disrupted schedules. However, the team adapted quickly, making necessary adjustments whenever required. They also took advantage of the natural beauty surrounding them, incorporating breathtaking views of the Irish Sea and lush gardens into many scenes. Despite the challenges, the makers of the prisoner managed to create something truly extraordinary. With its imaginative storyline, captivating visuals, and thoughtful commentary on individuality and freedom, this series has left an indelible mark on television history. The Prisoner is a thought-provoking television series that has left a lasting impression on its viewers since its debut in 1967. The show is known for its unique blend of spy fiction, science fiction, and psychological thriller elements, making it a captivating and intriguing watch. The series follows the story of a former secret agent who is held captive in a mysterious village where he is known only as Number Six. The village is a beautiful and idyllic place, but its inhabitants are kept there against their will and number six must navigate the complex power dynamics and psychological manipulations of the village's authorities to maintain his identity and resist their attempts to break his will. The prisoner's exploration of themes such as individuality, freedom, and identity has resonated with audiences for generations. The show's iconic status is due in part to its memorable characters, such as number six, and the enigmatic number two, who is in charge of the village and constantly tries to uncover Number Six's secrets. The Prisoner's impact on popular culture is undeniable, with its themes and motifs influencing numerous other works of fiction. The show's legacy can be seen in the many adaptations and reinterpretations it has inspired, as well as in the countless discussions and debates it has sparked among fans and critics alike. Despite its age, The Prisoner remains a captivating and thought-provoking series that continues to intrigue and inspire viewers to this day. Its exploration of complex themes and its memorable characters make it a classic that is well worth watching for anyone interested in spy fiction, science fiction, or psychological thrillers. The Prisoner is a 1967 TV series known for its unique and distinctive musical score. The music, composed by Ron Grainer, plays a crucial role in setting the narrative's mysterious and suspenseful tone. It complements the show's surreal and thought-provoking themes, enhancing the overall viewing experience. Grainer's score features a mix of orchestral and electronic elements, which were quite innovative for the time. The use of an electronic instrument called the Andes Martino adds an otherworldly quality to the music, perfectly capturing the show's eerie and unsettling atmosphere. The main theme, with its haunting melody and rhythmic pulsing, is instantly recognizable and sets the stage for the unfolding mystery. The soundtrack also includes various songs and pieces from different genres, which are used to great effect in specific scenes. For instance, the use of a traditional English folk song in one episode underscores the show's exploration of British culture and identity. The musicians involved in the creation of the score also played a significant role. The London Studio Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Albert Elms, brought Grainer's compositions to life with their skillful playing. The Andes Martineau was performed by Jean Lauriade, who was a master of the instrument, and added a unique touch to the music. In interviews, Grainer has shared his thoughts on the creative process behind the score. He mentioned that he wanted the music to reflect the show's unusual and enigmatic nature. The composers and musicians worked closely with the show's creators to ensure that the music aligned with the narrative 
and emotional tone of each episode. The Prisoner's musical score has left a lasting impact on television music. Its innovative use of electronic elements and the Ans Martino, along with its haunting melodies, have inspired many composers and musicians in the field. The score remains a testament to Grainer's musical prowess and his ability to create music that resonates with audiences and complements the narrative in a captivating way. In the iconic TV series The Prisoner, one character named the Supervisor, also known as No 28, makes frequent appearances, second only to No 6 and the Butler. Played by Peter Swanick, No 28 is commonly spotted in the control room and occasionally in the Green Dome, sometimes even wielding an umbrella while outside. An ongoing debate exists among fans regarding whether No 6 is actually John Drake from the previous show's Danger Man and Secret Agent. While creator Patrick M.C. Gouin firmly denies it, co-writer George Markstein supports the idea, which is further corroborated by officially authorized books referring to No 6 as John Drake. A more pragmatic explanation suggests that legal ownership of the John Drake character might have been lacking during production. Upon observing the opening credits, eagle-eyed viewers may notice two distinct automobile license plates, those belonging to cars driven by both the prisoner and his pursuer. The former bears the identifier KAR-12C, whereas the latter carries THA 858. These subtle details add depth to the captivating universe presented in this classic series. One of the most memorable scenes in The Prisoner is undoubtedly the opening sequence, where the protagonist resigns his job and is then gassed and abducted to the mysterious village. This scene is striking due to its fast pace, close-up shots, and the lead actor Patrick M. C. Gouin's intense performance. According to M. C. Gouin himself, this sequence sets the tone for the entire series, one of confusion, paranoia, and psychological tension. Another unforgettable moment comes in Episode 7, titled Once Upon a Time, when Number 6 engages in a physical fight against dozens of white balloons filled with red paint. The surreal imagery coupled with M.C. Gouin's committed acting leaves a lasting impression on viewers. Director Patrick Mixi Gouin used innovative techniques here, including slow motion and dramatic music, enhancing the dreamlike quality of the scene. One more iconic scene occurs in the finale episode, Fallout. Here, number six confronts number two in a theater setting. Their exchange is laden with symbolism and metaphor, further heightened by the backdrop of a Lord of the Flies-style tribal dance. Cinematographer Alex Vachinsky employed experimental angles and lighting to create an eerie atmosphere fitting for this climactic confrontation. These powerful visuals, combined with compelling narratives and exceptional performances, make The Prisoner an enduring classic even today. In the iconic 1967 television series, The Prisoner, the village pub goes by the name The Cat and Mouse, although it only makes an appearance in the episode Free For All. The theme music, known as The Age of Elegance, predates the series by several years, according to some sources. However, there is debate over its origin, with some crediting the show's lead actor, Patrick M. C. Gouin, for whistling the tune into a tape recorder, which was then transcribed and arranged by Ron Grainer. The world television premiere of The Prisoner took place in Canada on September 5, 1967, preceding its UK debut by 24 days. The series made its UK debut on Associated Television Midland on September 29, 1967, after its initial airing in Canada. This classic series, with its intriguing themes and captivating music, has left a lasting impact on television history. Released in 1967, the thought-provoking television series The Prisoner quickly captured audience attention with its unique blend of spy fiction, science fiction, and allegorical storytelling. This captivating show, created by and starring Patrick M.C. Gouin, follows a former secret agent who is held prisoner in a mysterious village where he is known only as Number Six. Throughout the series, viewers witness his continuous attempts to escape while resisting the relentless interrogation tactics employed by the village's authorities, represented primarily by Number Two. As an influential piece of media, The Prisoner struck a chord with contemporary audiences due to its exploration of several culturally significant themes, including individuality versus conformity, personal freedom, and power dynamics. These timeless issues continue to resonate today, making it a lasting contribution to popular culture. In fact, the iconic imagery of the protagonist wearing a distinctive black and white striped jacket has become synonymous with rebellion against oppressive systems. Moreover, this groundbreaking series delved into questions surrounding identity, paranoia, and surveillance, 
topics particularly relevant during the Cold War era, when trust was often hard to come by, by presenting these ideas through engaging narratives filled with suspenseful twists and turns, the prisoners sparked conversations among viewers both then and now regarding the importance of maintaining one's sense of self amidst external pressures. Furthermore, the prisoner holds a special place in TV history as a precursor to modern dystopian narratives like Black Mirror. Its ability to transcend traditional genre boundaries allowed it to appeal to various demographics and foster engagement across different segments of society. To this day, fans celebrate the legacy of this classic show through conventions, fanfiction, and scholarly analyses highlighting its relevance and influence on future generations. Delving deeper into the societal impact of the prisoner, we can see traces of its influence woven throughout popular culture. For instance, elements of its narrative structure have been adapted or referenced in numerous films, books, and other TV shows over the years. Additionally, some real-world locations associated with the production of The Prisoner have since transformed into tourist attractions, drawing visitors eager to immerse themselves in the enigmatic atmosphere portrayed in the series. Overall, the profound cultural and social impact of The Prisoner cannot be underestimated. As a seminal work that pushed conventional boundaries, it continues to inspire creative minds while fostering critical discourse around pressing issues related to personal autonomy, privacy, and psychological manipulation. In the 17th episode of this classic, cave scenes reveal the vast soundstage used for previous episodes. The space was large enough to accommodate all interior sets, and sequences shot on standing backlot sets give a sense of the expansive original MGM British Studios at Boreham This is not to be confused with the later MGM EMI Studios, which was a rebranded version of the older associated British Pictures Corp later known as the EMI Elstree Studios. Due to ITV's regional franchise quirks, The Prisoner was not aired in North Wales, where outdoor scenes were filmed, until 1970. It was only then that HTV acquired it. Patrick Macy Gouin, the lead actor in this iconic series, served as the honorary president of Six of One, the official appreciation society for The Prisoner, from its inception in 1977 until his passing in 2009. This society was dedicated to celebrating the enduring legacy of this captivating television series. The Prisoner, a groundbreaking TV series from 1967, was met with mixed reviews during its initial release. However, over time, it has gained a significant cult following and critical acclaim. Some early reviewers found the show confusing, with the New York Times calling it an aesthetic chess game that might be too complex for some viewers. On the other hand, the Guardian praised it as a brilliant piece of work, noting its unique blend of action, science fiction, and psychological drama. Despite the divided opinions, The Prisoner received several award nominations. In 1968, it was nominated for four Primetime Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Dramatic Series and Outstanding Writing Achievement in Drama. Although it didn't win in any category, these nods highlighted the innovative storytelling and production values of the series. Moreover, The Prisoner has been recognized by the British Film Institute as one of the greatest television programs ever made. This distinction underscores the lasting impact and influence of this classic on both small and big screens. These accolades signify the visionary approach taken by the creators and actors involved in making The Prisoner. They also demonstrate how the series transcended contemporary expectations of television, paving the way for more sophisticated narratives and stylistic choices in future productions. In the 1967 television series, The Prisoner, actor and producer Patrick M. C. Gouin played a leading role, demonstrating his authority and demanding nature on set. Offscreen, M. C. Gouin's influence continued when he granted British heavy metal band Iron Maiden the rights to use an audio clip from The Prisoner in their 1982 song of the same name. The clip, used in the song's introduction, features M. C. Gouin's voiceover from the show's opening sequence. Beyond The Prisoner, M.C. Gouin shared the screen with actor Aubrey Morris in four different productions. Their collaborations included The Queer Fellow in 1962, three episodes of Secret Agent in 1964, and the 1998 series Ashes to Ashes. These varied roles highlighted McGowan's range as an actor and his ability to work in diverse contexts. In The Prisoner, M.C. Gouin's character, number six, resists authority and rebels against the system reflecting M.C. Gouin's own demanding presence during production. His commitment to the series and its themes left a lasting impact on the show's cast and crew, making The Prisoner a classic of 1960s television. 
The Prisoner is a 1967 TV series that has left a lasting impression on its viewers. One interesting anecdote from the set involves the show's lead actor and director, Patrick McFiguin. McFiguin, who played the main character number six, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He insisted on performing many of his own stunts, including the famous scene where his character is dragged by a rope behind a car. However, the stunt took a toll on MC Guin's health, leaving him with bruised ribs and a lasting respect for professional stunt performers. Another memorable moment from the production of The Prisoner occurred during the filming of the episode Living in Harmony. The episode was shot in the American Wild West town of Kanab, Utah, where the crew faced numerous challenges. From unpredictable weather to logistical issues, the production faced many hurdles. Yet, the team persevered, and the final product remains a fan favorite. The show's unique concept and thought-provoking themes also made for an unusual filming experience. The Prisoner was filmed in the picturesque village of Port Marion, Wales, which served as the mysterious and surreal setting for the story. The village's peculiar architecture and colorful buildings added to the show's enigmatic atmosphere, making it an unforgettable location for the cast and crew. Behind the scenes, the production of The Prisoner was marked by creativity, determination, and a touch of danger. The show's enduring legacy continues to captivate audiences, offering a compelling glimpse into the minds of its talented creators. After leaving school at 16, Patrick and Seguin held various jobs, including working in a rope factory, on a chicken farm, and as a bank clerk. His interest in acting led him to become a stage manager at Sheffield Repertory Theatre. In the TV series The Prisoner, MC Guin insisted that the main character, number six, do not engage in romantic relationships. Despite attempts by writers to introduce love interests, MC Guin rejected these ideas, leading to limited romantic moments such as number six's connection with Allison in The Schizoid Man and the infatuation of an observer in Dance of the Dead. Later in his career, MC Guin declined the offer to play Dr. Ira Ray Graves in Star Trek, the next generation episode The Schizoid Man, due to his previous involvement in The Prisoner. The Prisoner, a 1967 TV series, stands out in film history for its unique blend of spy fiction, psychological drama, and philosophical inquiry. The show's influence can be seen in various aspects of future filmmaking. The series is known for its innovative narrative structure. Each episode presents a self-contained story, while also contributing to the larger narrative arc. This approach has been adopted by many anthology series and films that followed, offering audiences a mix of standalone stories and ongoing plot lines. The Prisoner's visual style, with its bold colors and surreal imagery, has also been influential. The show's distinctive aesthetic can be seen in later productions that experiment with visual storytelling, such as the works of director David Lynch. Moreover, the series' exploration of themes like individuality, freedom, and control has resonated with many filmmakers. These themes have been revisited and expanded upon in various films and TV series, including the dystopian worlds of Black Mirror. The Prisoner has also inspired subsequent works directly. For instance, the 2009 remake, though not as critically acclaimed, attempted to update the series for a modern audience. The series' iconic character, number six, has become a cultural reference point appearing in various forms of media. In essence, The Prisoner, with its innovative storytelling and thought-provoking themes, has left a lasting impact on the world of film and television. Transitioning into the episode order of the TV series, fans debate the proper sequence due to original broadcast discrepancies. a and &E's suggested order includes Arrival, Free For All, Dance of the Dead, and more. Following the end of Secret Agent, a conversation sparked the creation of the show. Mary Morris, a potential Doctor Who cast member, was considered for a role in The Prisoner. In the world of television, there are instances where actors and actresses come close to landing major roles, only to see the opportunity slip away. Jane Merrill, for example, was strongly considered to replace Diana Rigg in The Avengers, but the role ultimately went to Linda Thorson. Merrill's career did not suffer, however, as she went on to appear in other notable productions. One such production was the surreal science fiction allegory series, The Prisoner, where Patrick M. C. Guin delivered a standout performance as number six. Magna C. Guin was already a well-known figure in the industry, but his role in this classic series further solidified his status as a talented actor. Meanwhile, Anton Rogers left an indelible mark in the world of theater, with memorable performances in productions such as Pickwick at the Seville Theater in 1963 and on Broadway in 1965. 
his contributions to the arts continue to be cherished by audiences and industry professionals alike. In this same time period, these three individuals each made their mark in their respective fields, leaving a lasting impact that continues to resonate with audiences today. In 2004, The Prisoner secured its place as the seventh top cult show in TV Guide's ranking. The series features the lead actor, Patrick Nancy Guin, who has quite an unusual connection with two fellow actors known for having a glass eye, Leo McKern and Peter Falk. Leo McKern, one of the key actors in The Prisoner, experienced a close call while working on another production, Ryan's Daughter. During the filming of a storm sequence under director David Lean, McKern narrowly escaped death, which he attributed to Lean's neglect. The extended delays took their toll, leading McKern to contemplate quitting acting entirely. After completing his work on the film, he suffered what could be described as a mental collapse, a nerve-wracking experience indeed. Following this incident, McKern stayed away from making movies for roughly three years. Interestingly, the actor who played number two in The Prisoner, Eric Portman, began his career on stage with Robert Courtnage's Shakespeare Company in 1923. As for the unique attire seen in the series, the costumes are actually the sports uniforms of Mill Hill School in North London. This connection came about when Patrick M. Seguin, the lead actor, moved near the school during production and decided to incorporate the uniforms into the show. The choice of clothing may seem trivial, but it speaks to a larger theme present in The Prisoner. One of the number twos claims that the village serves as a model for the world, and this idea has resonated with many viewers. Since the show's airing, levels of public surveillance have indeed risen, with closed-circuit television becoming increasingly prevalent in developed countries, and identification numbers becoming essential for various purposes. These developments lend credence to the notion of the world as a global village, which was foreseen in the series. In the iconic TV series The Prisoner from 1967, actor Patrick M. C. Guin took on more than just the lead role. He also contributed to the writing and directing of the show, adding his unique touch to its creation. One fascinating detail about the village in which the series takes place is the absence of the number seven. Neither the numeral nor the combination of numbers containing it can be found anywhere in the village. Interestingly though, the number does make an appearance on a grave marker in the episode titled Hammer into Anvil, where it is etched alongside the number three, spelling out 73. Another notable figure associated with the prisoner is British actor Donald Sindon, who appeared in several episodes during the first season. His career included many roles requiring him to perform stunts, including one memorable scene in the movie The Cruel Sea. While filming underwater sequences, he discovered that due to his negative buoyancy, he needed to lie on top of a stunt double to remain submerged safely. Quite an unusual experience. Anton Rogers made his last stage appearance in the touring production of Alan Bennett's The History Boys in 2006, before his ill health forced him to withdraw. In the same year, the TV series The Prisoner saw its lead actor, Patrick and Seguin, reprise his role as number six in the computer wore menace shoes. However, behind the scenes, tensions had been brewing between M. C. Guin and George Markstein, resulting in Markstein cutting all ties with the series during its production. These events add depth to the stories behind both the actors and the making of this classic television show. In the world of literature, the Prisoner TV series inspired a set of three softcover novels. Ace Books published them, with the first one penned by Thomas M. Dish in 1969. The subsequent novels, number two and three, were written by David McDaniel and Hank Stein, respectively, in 1969 and 1970. These books, well regarded for their pulp fiction, offer unique stories that differ from the series scripts. Vintage editions can be found online, although their costs may vary based on quality. Musically, the Prisoner theme includes the talents of guitarist Vic Flick, who also contributed to the famous James Bond theme in early seven movies. Patrick Mincy Guin, known for his role in The Prisoner, was considered for Charles Shaughnessy's part in Ryan's Daughter in 1970. Interestingly, Leo McKern, who appeared in The Prisoner, played Thomas Ryan in the same film. This classic TV series has undoubtedly left its mark on the entertainment industry, with its actors and musicians contributing to other renowned works. In the filming of The Prisoner, actor Patrick McCue had a strong aversion to on-screen romance. This led to an interesting situation during the filming of Chimes of Big Ben, where his character is seen with his arm around Nadia and stroking her hair. The person in the scene is not Nadia, but McEwen's own daughter, wearing a wig. The entire series was filmed in the North Wales resort village of Port Marion. 
MC Guin was inspired to use this location after filming a couple of Danger Man episodes there. The filming took place over the course of a year, with the village's unique architecture and scenery serving as the backdrop for the mysterious events of the prisoner. Mexi Guin's jacket, a distinctive part of his character's appearance, was actually dark brown with piping. Two jackets were used during the filming, each slightly different from the other. These jackets became an iconic part of the character's look, contributing to the overall mystery and intrigue of the prisoner. The enigmatic finale of the prisoner sparked controversy, leading to the legend that Patrick Messi Guin had to go into hiding for a while. This classic series features signs with messages like residence only and private residence only throughout, which may have originated from Port Marion, the hotel where some scenes were filmed. However, these signs also serve as an in-joke, as everyone living in the village is, by definition, a resident. Interestingly, Mekfiguin used his real birth date and publicity photo for his character, no, six, in the series. The mysteries and intrigue of this classic show continue to fascinate viewers even today. Actress Annette Andre has been open about her dislike for her time on The Prisoner. She had issues with the set design and didn't see eye to eye with Patrick Mesiguin. The series first graced American television screens in 1968, airing as a summer replacement for a Jackie Gleason series. The enigmatic headshot of MC Guin, seen in the opening credits, and episodes like Free For All and Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling, is actually a promotional photo from his earlier series, Secret Agent. It shows him smiling slightly, dressed in a black tie and gray suit. Known for its bizarre and unique storyline, the Prisoner is a limited-run TV series that has left a lasting impression on viewers. The Siren's melody in the show is a transformation of the theme melody for The Twilight Zone, adding another layer of intrigue to the series. One of the actors in The Prisoner was Clifford Evans, who had a successful 54-year career in the industry. He was educated at Linelli County School and trained at RADA, receiving Northcliffe and Academy scholarships. In addition to acting, Evans was also a writer and director. He was appointed director of productions by Cardiff City Council for the Festival of Britain in 1951, and in 1957 founded the St. David's Theatre Trust to establish a national theatre for Wales. Evans was known to enjoy playing chess, a game that requires strategy and critical thinking, much like the plot of The Prisoner. His contributions to the world of theatre and film extend beyond his role in this classic TV series, making him a versatile and accomplished figure in the industry. In the late 1960s, actor Patrick M. C. Guin appeared in a thought-provoking television series called The Prisoner. Interestingly, this wasn't his first encounter with a project bearing the same name. Previously, he had worked on two other productions also titled The Prisoner, one in 1960 and another in 1963, which shared several similarities with the 1967 version. One memorable scene from the initial episode, Arrival, features M. C. Guin's character posing an intriguing question, what is this place? His choice of words, not asking where, but what, has since been echoed in numerous science fiction and fantasy productions. Another notable connection involves actress Mary Morris. Before her role as Consul Katura in the 1981 Doctor Who storyline The Keeper of Traken, she was considered for a part in The Prisoner. While things didn't work out then, it highlights the interconnectedness of these iconic British television shows. During its initial airing, the filming of this classic television series fell behind schedule, causing UK TV stations to broadcast previously unaired episodes of Danger Man in its place. This led to confusion among viewers. After production ended, one of the creators, George Markstein, penned a novel called The Cooler, inspired by a real-world facility established during World War II in a secluded region of Britain. Its purpose? To safeguard individuals possessing confidential information. In the village where the show was filmed, the structure utilized as Number Six's residence transformed into a store offering prisoner memorabilia. In the iconic television series The Prisoner, viewers may notice a unique typeface used for most written signs in the mysterious village where the story unfolds. Named Albertus, this font features two distinct modifications the removal of the dot above the letters I and J and the replacement of the letter E with a symbol resembling the euro currency. However, some exceptions apply such as when capital letters appear in signs, or when No. 6 examines village maps in Arrival. Additionally, the information sign displayed during the first episode utilizes a separate font altogether. Anton Rogers, the actor portraying No. 2 in several episodes, 
originally aspired to become a medical professional before his mother encouraged him to pursue a career in entertainment. Beginning at the tender age of five, she enlisted his participation in charity singing and dance performances and eventually steered him towards acting. Originally, the closing sequence of The Prisoner was set to conclude with the word pop. This version included depictions of two spheres, one representing Earth and the other featuring the ambiguous inclusion of space, positioned side by side. Unfortunately, these captivating visuals ultimately found themselves left on the cutting room floor. In the iconic TV series The Prisoner, Anton Rogers, known for his roles in Fresh Fields, Made to December, Noah's Ark, and Uprising, played a significant character. The comedy Fresh Fields ranked highly in a BBC poll, demonstrating its popularity among audiences. Before becoming a renowned actor, Patrick Mexiguin, star of The Prisoner, started his showbiz career early. At just 19 years old, he worked as a stagehand and manager for the Sheffield Repertory Theatre. By the time he turned 21, MC Guin had already been given leading roles in some of their productions. As for the mysterious figure seen sitting behind the desk in the opening credits, it is none other than George Markstein, who served as both script editor and co-creator of The Prisoner. With his distinctive bald head, Markstein left an indelible mark on the series. In 1946, actor Donald Sindon made a surprising decision. He joined the Shakespeare Memorial Theatre Company, even though he hadn't been fond of Shakespeare during his school days. His dedication led him to become a prominent figure in theatre and television. One notable role was in the TV series The Prisoner, where Sindon appeared alongside Patrick Messiguin, who played the lead character known simply as Number Six. An intriguing aspect of The Prisoner involves the unique hand signal used by the villagers, which bears a striking resemblance to a symbol utilized by early Christians to signify a fish. Some viewers have speculated that this connection might imply deeper themes woven into the fabric of the storyline. However, interpretations vary among fans of this enigmatic classic. It is also worth noting that both Britain and Canada experienced their initial airings of The Prisoner in monochrome due to network limitations, as neither country had yet adopted color broadcasting at the time. Despite these technical constraints, the series still managed to captivate audiences worldwide. Interestingly, The Prisoner took a unique approach during its time by airing two episodes, Living in Harmony and Fallout, sans opening credit sequences. Moreover, in Do Not Forsake Me, keen-eyed viewers may have noticed the mention of Port Marion and an address on an envelope, hinting at the show's setting. When it first hit American screens in the summer of 1968, Living in Harmony remained unseen possibly deemed too contentious amidst the ongoing Vietnam War. Clearly, even half a century later, this classic continues to intrigue fans and television historians alike. Will further secrets come to light? Only time will tell. Did The Prisoner leave a lasting impression on you? This groundbreaking 1967 TV series still captures audiences with its unique storyline and thought-provoking themes. We'd love to hear about your personal connections to this classic. How did it affect you when you first watched it? What moments stood out, and how have they stayed with you over the years? By sharing your stories, you can help create a richer experience for fellow fans and newcomers alike. Reflecting on the influence of The Prisoner, consider how it may have shaped your perception of television and cinema. Perhaps it sparked curiosity about dystopian narratives or inspired deeper exploration into psychological thrillers. Share these insights with us. Let's engage in meaningful conversations around our shared passion for memorable productions like this one. If you enjoyed delving into the mysteries of The Prisoner, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting journeys through cinematic history. Together, we can celebrate the power of visual storytelling and appreciate the artistry behind both beloved classics and hidden gems. So go ahead, start reminiscing about your favorite scenes and unforgettable characters. Who knows, your words might inspire someone else to embark on their own adventure with the